Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. And again, I was looking at a bunch of articles, kind of wanted to share some things. Uh, automakers take multi-billion profit hit as battery metals boom. Uh, so a lot of these automake automakers, as a commodity boom ensues, uh, the battery metals and the electric vehicles, we're talking about copper and some of the, the materials that go into the batteries, uh, these companies are gonna become a lot less profitable. Uh, and in fact, the, the cars themselves uh, could dramatically go up in price based off of raw material prices and shortages. And I'm looking at here, the rally in lithium and copper prices, the key battery metals that I'm talking about and what she touched on in this article comes at a time when the global auto industry faces increased supply chain pricing pressure from the chip shortage and higher prices of steel and other input materials. The rally in the price of raw materials highlights the challenges the industry and the world face in accelerating the production and sales of EVs to fight the worst uh, effects of climate change. The higher prices of raw materials, including the key battery metals, uh, is set to cost the six largest automakers in Japan as much as $9 billion, uh, this fiscal year. Uh, so we've got a large increase in the cost of those materials. Uh, this cost headache represents 30% of the total profits forecasts of the six biggest Japanese car makers. Raw material inflation is not going to be something transitory. They think it's going to continue to go higher. And this is out of Japan. Uh, that's He's from Honda Motor. Uh, the issue with higher costs is not unique to Japanese car makers. You also have the U.S. car makers. Uh, they go through. Uh, GM is targeting annual global EV sales of more than 1 million by 2025, which is just around the corner. Uh, I've touched on other uh, articles on uh, EVs by 2025, 2026 with a, with a battery shortage. So what this is kind of leading into, and, and not only should we maybe look at investments in lithium and copper, which we have on the channel already, but <clears throat> I'm also seeing a bunch of other countries start to pump money into hydrogen. Uh, Germany pumps $10 billion into hydrogen in bid to become global leader. Uh, Germany will fund 62 large-scale hydrogen projects with as much as $10 billion in federal and state funds. Uh, so a lot of these, some of these countries are starting to pump money into hydrogen. Hydrogen will solve, I think, some of the battery mineral problems. Uh, but it'll, it'll force more pressure on platinum uh, as, as, a, as a different material. So I think we're going to start adopting a whole bunch of different uh, solutions, not just one solution or the other. They're going to start really starting to branch out and, and develop many different uh, technologies and, and, and benefit a lot of different sectors. So I'm trying to play the minerals for all these different types of sectors uh, in this next commodity boom. In Germany, it says we are making Germany a hydrogen country. Uh, a total of 95% of road traffic still depends on fossil fuels, so Germany needs mobility that relies on renewable energies. We must and want to urgently promote the switch to climate-friendly mobility. And that's what their goal is, and that's why they're putting the money into uh, hydrogen. Uh, Japan is also betting quite large on hydrogen to lift its ambitious carbon neutral plans. Uh, they're in a little bit different scenario than a lot of other countries. Uh, they're a lot much more, they're, they're much more compact and they don't have a lot of space to be throwing up a whole bunch of wind and solar and all these different types of, of uh, renewables. And then you've got the battery problems in terms of shortages and the cost increases of batteries. So they're going with uh, hydrogen. J Japan has an ambitious plans to be entirely carbon neutral by 2050. Trouble is, it has no clear vision of how to get there. Uh, Japan's nuclear industry was gutted by the 2011 tsunami in Fukushima. Uh, and they also say the mountainous and densely populated J uh, Japanese archipelago has limited room for large solar farms. Its narrow continental shelf poses complications uh, for offshore wind turbines. Uh, the government hopes hydrogen could be a part of that solution. Uh, to to Toyota unveiled the world's first mass-produced hydrogen fuel cell car in 2014 and launched its second generation, Mira, last year. So uh, what I think is going to happen, and what I'm kind of reading through these articles, is we've got the EV section, uh, we've got the battery, and then we've got kind of the hydrogen uh, solutions. I think they're both going to be implemented. I think EVs are going to run into problems with material shortages and material costs. Uh, and then I think we're going to go more towards the hydrogen side. Uh, once we go to more towards the hydrogen side, I'm sure costs will ramp up there, uh, probably platinum, and then they'll try 
you know, they'll try to design out a lot of these materials. I don't know if it's going to be successful or not, and maybe fossil fuels will stick around longer than what we think. So I'm, I'm looking at this, trying to develop a, 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 an investment strategy and thesis in my portfolio. I'm still looking at all this stuff. I think they are going to implement a lot of this stuff. And, and I don't think it's going to be market driven. I think it's going to be more government driven type type things. Uh, but given where we're at, given all the waste of all this stuff, you know, I'm, I'm not 100% bought into it yet. Uh, I'm, I'm still trying to see, I'm trying to still poke holes through it. So I don't know how to invest directly into solar, wind, uh, and, and if it's worthwhile doing it. Uh, I also don't know if those are considered tech companies or if they're considered commodity type companies. Because usually when you think energy, it's commodity related. Uh, I don't think solar and wind fit into a commodity. I almost would say that they're not. So it'd be kind of weird to, to take a stance on your bullish energy, but have all the input costs of all of these solar and, and wind ramp way up, making them less affordable. Uh, I don't know if they're just going to force this stuff and say emissions free, we're going to overrule it. These are going to be the winners anyway. If that's the case, then you're going to see a massive commodity boom in some of these materials. And that's kind of what I'm ramping up for. I'm getting into nickel, copper, platinum, silver, tin, like those type of, of materials. Uh, I'm playing it through either physical metals, royalty companies, or the mining companies. So I've got a lot of diversified mining companies, some royalty companies, and then the physical metals themselves like platinum and silver. Uh, so that's how I'm playing this move. Uh, I think they're going to go into it. I'm not 100% bought in saying that these are what we'll call it great solutions. Uh, but if this is the route they're going to go, I'm going to be prepared for it on a commodity side. And if it takes off, I win. If it doesn't take off, well, we're in a commodities boom and these materials are still going to be needed in other applications in greater and greater qual quantities. So that's kind of how I'm preparing for it. If you guys like this, this content, please give me a thumbs up. Appreciate you guys listening. This is Finding Value.